Uh, you probably have no idea where we are, but first of all, welcome uh, from Bramble Time. I think Steve should really explain where exactly we are at the moment. Well, we're standing on top of a scaffolding on top of the roof of the house, which is uh, probably about eight, nine metres high. Uh, the reason for that is because, obviously, when we put the roof on, we won't get an opportunity to do this. We normally uh, do the filming from the veg garden, but we have um, the most incredible sunsets behind us and we're on the east side of Italy where the sunset is on the west. Uh, probably hear Button in the background asking where we are. Button's not here. Um, <laughs> we I can, didn't think it was wise, no. I, I can assure you that Lynn is here, not under duress. Or am I? <laughs> She's health and safety. She has got all her protective equipment, although you can't see any of it. Um, and uh, she's part of Bramble Tire Construzioni. Uh, she's a registered part of it, so um, she's allowed to be up here where and, other people are not. And I've got my crash helmet to go with it. I've got one of those proper hats. Yeah, Lynn, Lynn, Lynn would call it a crash helmet. We would call it a hard hat. Oh, yeah, sorry. I've got a hard hat, but it looks like a crash helmet. So it was an opportunity to, to give you a look at from the top of the house, um, straight towards the, uh, I think it's the Grand Sasso. And the Mayella National Park is on the other side of us. Yeah. Because we're on the edge of the Mayella National Park. We are. Well, we're going to try and give you a, a slight recap of what we've done in the past couple of weeks because we haven't really done a chat for a little while. It's been very busy. <laughs> yeah, you could say it's been rather busy. And very hot. Uh, yeah, and we had a few visitors to the place, haven't we? Yep. Yeah. Um, they might not be the human type of a visitor, but we have had quite a few visitors. Uh, there has been some wonderful insects that's visited the vegetable garden and if you have just watched that video you will have seen the beautiful swallowtail butterflies there is this wonderful little uh, it's not a bee it, I believe it's called a hummingbird moth and it's got um, like a, a long little funnel and it and it was taking the pollen from the lavender wasn't it yeah it's incredible and I, and I think uh, fair play to Lynn uh, we put the lavender in um, more so than uh, for it to look nice a whole and row also of it for the mosquitoes but it, and obviously for the mosquitoes to stay away but it's really given a look to the garden and uh, the uh, the small insects that come in the bees there are hundreds mm. of them every day we're almost at the end of the lavender though and the next thing I will be doing is actually picking that lavender and making little lavender bags and everything with it. But we didn't just have the insects that came to visit us. We were sitting having lunch this particular day and we heard this bird and the next minute we looked and on the ground was a parrot. But it was a parrot lovebird and we've got a picture and you're going to put that on. I did this. say... <laughs> I did say we were having lunch and I said look at that imagine that there's a parrot on the ground I mean no one will believe you because yeah. Button was six feet away and the parrot was just sitting there walking along the ground towards Button uh, the only thing is I said it uh, Button then was alerted and unfortunately scared it off yeah. um, but uh, it looked quite friendly it looked like it wanted mm. to come and see us uh, red head green body, green body. Uh, uh, but we did manage to get a photograph. I had my I had my phone on the table hmm, at the time, so we have got a, a still photograph of that. Uh, in the meantime, we've also had a huge toad that Steve saw uh, when he took Button out at night time for a the walk. The size of a spade shovel. It was like this, wasn't I it? I wondered what it was, like a cow pet. <laughs> Um, it was incredible. I mean, I, I I was absolutely gobsmacked, and Button was just standing there looking at, not knowing what to do, no. just looking at it. But, but, um, I, but I really think the, the other thing that did happen, and I did actually manage to put it on Facebook and I did manage to video it, uh, Steve needed a bucket, a black bucket that he normally mixes some cement. He has more than one, but there was one uh, high up on the scaffolding. They're large buckets. Yeah, they're it. large buckets to mix the uh, cement. He came and realised that in the top of the bucket there was a hole. and removed the bucket and underneath that bucket here you had a small 
tin bucket, didn't you? Uh, yeah, just to put one on top of the other, uh, you know, just in case, in case a storm comes, uh, it just secures the bucket yeah. down, up, the three floors up, and having the bucket up here is handy, because then I haven't got to go downstairs to go and get yeah. it. Yeah, uh, but when he lifted the black bucket up, um, a bird flew out, you didn't really catch a proper look at it, but actually, a red head. yeah, it had a red head, but actually inside this tin bucket was 11, the most small little duck blue yeah. coloured eggs. Duck blue. Duck blue egg. Yeah. Um, I posted things on Facebook, people did try and help respond. We didn't come up here for over a week, um, if not mm. longer. But unfortunately, Mum hasn't returned, so there was a lot of people that asked, and I'm so sorry that we're not going to have any of these little baby birds, whatever they were. Mm. But uh, we didn't intentionally mean to do anything, but these are the visitors that come and visit us in anyway, this area. Moving so on. moving on. Uh, oh, gosh, we had a wonderful experience going to the fish market. It was great. I love the, a fish market. The fish market in Pescara. Yeah, I want to start smoking fish uh, when we start to get a little bit further down the road at Bramble Tyre. Uh, purely because I did as a kid uh, in a fishmonger's and, a, and, and smoking fresh fish is just the most delightful thing to do. Um, but we had an amazing experience down at the fish market. We know them, uh, they know us, we take button, so the dog is allowed in the fish market, yeah, which strangely is, enough. Which, you know, you could imagine in some countries that doesn't happen. And we got talking uh, to the person who owned the particular store. Uh, now, let me get his name right, Giacomo. Yeah. That's right, his yeah. name is Giacomo. And um, we were chatting away to him as we were picking what we wanted to, to have. Uh, we, we actually got a nice mackerel, we got some squid, uh, we also got some wonderful big tiger prawns. Super fresh as well. Oh, they were absolutely gorgeous. And the next minute, as we're talking to him, he went, Oh, would you like a glass of wine? And he opened his fridge, Pecorino. took out some wine, and, and we then stood continually talking to him with a glass of white wine. Now, I don't mean it. I don't know whether you go to a fishmonger's or anything to buy your fish and get given a glass of wine, have a great natter with the owner. And it was just, it was just lovely. And this is the kind of hospitality that we are receiving here. Mm. And, and it's just fabulous. Yeah. So anyway, we're moving on from that. What else have we been up to, Steve? Uh, a few things we found, I think, on, um, on uh, from the garden. Oh, uh, gosh. But that, that's been sort of over a period of time, and we did mention about it, didn't we? Yeah, and I think it's time to mention, uh, show one or two things. I, I think words are something, and actually showing is, uh, is a complete other mm. thing. So it's show and tell? Well, possibly, uh, but it's important. It's important for the history of Bramble Tye. It's important for the region. We're in the Gustav line. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know that, mm. that was the... Uh, the Nazi line in World War II and uh, where Italians, uh, well some Italians, and uh, English and Americans were one side and the Germans uh, were the other, where they were lobbing things at each other. And uh, I thought I'd just mm. introduce these two things. One's gone down there. That's one we'll of, show that later. One of them doesn't want to be shown. <laughs> That's, we're on the scaffolding, there's a great big hole, so that's gone. Uh, I'll tell you that what was it was. good, that. Yeah, I'll tell you what it I've been building all day, uh, <laughs> a little bit tired, just had a shower, rushed to get up here. Uh, anyway, that's gone. But it was a browning, uh, a browning um, ammunition. Uh, so that would be from a, 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 an automatic rifle, probably. That no, wouldn't be from an automatic rifle. Would it rifle. be like the Gatling gun type no, thing? No, no, that would be from a, a, a rifle which sat on a tripod for accuracy. So that was a Browning. Um, but more interestingly, if I don't drop this... What, what year was the Browning? Uh, 40, 1942. 1942. Good. So that would be American. So we do know that puts Americans in Bramble Tie. Yeah. And that was found in the barn, the Baraka. Yes. which is just next to the house and that was inside the perimeter of the foundation because obviously what we needed to do with the bracket before we start building we need to we needed to do a seismic foundation so that was picked up in the bucket of uh, of the digger the other one it's i'll hold it more firmly um yeah i will do um <laughs> this is something i won't say more interesting but more uh interesting for uh perhaps the English viewers. Uh, this is a 20 mil caliber. It would be known as a 0.303, I think, to the people that know. And actually, it's not English. It uh, was made, I believe, in Connecticut. 
And really? Yeah, I know. Well, it, people can write in and tell us. I mean, if you well, know more than what we do, which you probably will, it's got, then please comment. It's got 1946 on, stamped on the back, um, and it, it is archived uh, in the National Archives in the UK. But the reason why it's American is that the Americans supplied uh, 303 ammo uh, for fighter jets, English fighter jets. But a lot of people will not know that, and that's a fact. And um, they were found to be too small. But the back end is quite uh, is obvious. If you look at this on the internet, you'll see. And the front end would be as long as uh, the back end, and that would have gone into uh, an automatic machine gun um, on a Spitfire or something like that. I'm sure the Hurricanes had them as well. Should I tell the story? I'm going to tell the story as to how we found it. It was the most bizarre uh, situation. Um, Obviously, you know that we've got 48 olive trees and it's important that we try and keep the grass cut uh, underneath the olive trees. Um, but what we also have to do is we've got stones and we've got bits of branches. So before Steve tends to cut, I have a little wander around and I pick up as much as I can so it doesn't sort of ruin uh, the cutter blades. And um, I thought, oh my God, what's this on the ground? Picked it up and called Steve over and went, I found a shell. Hmm. And he went, a shell? What do you mean a shell? I said, well, is it from the beach? And I went, no, it's not from the beach. It's from like a gun, like a bang, bang shell. And that was what we found. And that was this particular shell. I, I knew uh, right from the get-go, because we're using a scavatory here, which is a, a digger to, uh, to English language, um, we would be finding some stuff. And we found some incredible stuff, which we will introduce into some of yeah, these in talks. Time. Um, uh, you know, in time. Otherwise, it, 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 everything gets clogged up. And uh, but it's it, for me, it's hugely interesting because of what it meant it was we could do just a bit more investigation on the house. And in fact, um, unfortunately, somebody who's recently died in the village told me um, because we told them we found this ammunition. Oh yeah, there was uh, you um, partisans, partisans which were Italian, and also um, UK army uh, that took refuge in in this Brambleton. House, yeah and also some Americans. So that means something to us a great yeah, deal. It's, it's very important. Yeah, uh, so that's that part of history, but we'll move on. Okay, so the other thing is, obviously, um, you know that we've just brought out the video about the garden, but also me collecting the slow berries and everything. Well, since then, I've actually got involved in a few Facebook um, groups, um, the Raised Bed group, which is fantastic. I've got some great information from them. And also organic gardening, because that's what we're doing. We are not using anything on the garden no, we're not. at all. we're not. No, well, we do use water. <laughs> Nothing. Just, uh, no, no, no. Oh, sorry, we do. We've got the magic poo, remember? We've got the manure, so we are using something. Olympic, Olympic, <laughs> the Olympic, ma magic, Olympic poo. magic poo. Olympic magic poo. For the relevance, you can look at the uh, last video. We're that not was, being, that was we're the not video when we, when we collected the uh, yeah. manure. But anyway, the other side of it is we are so fortunate because around us we have some wonderful trees. Um, we've had... Fig trees. I've picked figs recently. A large figs as well. Lovely figs, which I've had for breakfast. Also, I've made fig chutney. There is plum trees. I've picked plums. We have picked apricots. Uh, the walnuts are actually growing on the trees at the moment, but that will be later on in the year. Um, we, our pomegranate tree is growing at the moment, and that's only a couple of years. You bought that as a present for me, didn't you? I did. Um, but we've actually got quite a few of our own fruit trees as well as our olive trees and they are doing really well. Well we've got, we had a, f a small what you call a young tree um, pretty much full of apricots uh, which was lovely. Yeah They're and I've lovely. made apricot chutney because we like cooking and yeah, we love Indian nicely. food. Yeah, we've got uh, the cherry tree. Are we moving on? Oh, and the other thing is, we've had loads of salads, because obviously um, well, we're, going to show, we're going to show more, because the reality is these beef tomatoes now are like this. They are the size of my, you know, fist. Oh, they're beautiful. And, you know, I, I love to say uh, sunshine in a tomato. Well, we've had, um, we've had at least six weeks now of temperatures up in the 40 degrees. Um, it, it, it takes a little bit of time to get used to and obviously with the building work that's going on and the veg growing we're looking at both ends quite closely it's difficult to use the machines 
in the height of sun, you know, 12, 1 o'clock in the afternoon. But the veg seem to be coping with it oh, quite well. Oh, gosh, they are. And also, mm. you know, we've had information. I now know I'm watering in the morning, I'm not watering in the evening because of various of the things. But we are probably, the sun is now setting behind us, but also what we do get is we get sunrise. I've taken some pictures in the morning, and I hope Steve's going to put some of the pictures of the of the sunrise in comparison to the sunset because that's on the other side of Brambletye for us. Yeah, so the, on the east coast uh, we've got the sunrise obviously, um, but um, no, it's uh, mm. it's been, I've quite enjoyed it. I, I see a lot of people on um, YouTube talking about the heat as a, as a bit of a negative. I actually quite enjoy it, it's, oh, it's quite been, nice. It's been wonderful. So, <clears throat> talking about the heat, the other thing that we did do, and you know how Steve is meticulous, and um, we've had some comments me mentioning how meticulous you are. You know, he likes to get that level out, and I have to look at the bubble to it, make sure that the it, bubble's right. Let me tell you. If no, we've I, got a pool. It, uh, I'm no, trying no. to get to the if pool. I'm not, I'm trying to get if to I the am pool. Not, if I am not pool. meticulous, you'll go, that's not straight. Yeah, that's true. I would hate to think that our house wasn't straight, so I am very happy that Steve is meticulous. But what we've also done is he's levelled the land um, in a particular area and we've now got a pool that is out so that we can actually have a dip when it gets really well, hot. It's only from Eurospin. Yeah, it was from Eurospin. For those of you, um, it's But you just need a, something to dip into. It's a nice pool, but we're not getting sponsored by anybody. Now... You have been extremely busy. Yeah, it's been a, a few on the stonework. Yeah, three or four weeks of uh, thinking, hard graft, sweating, measuring, <laughs> drilling, covered in dust. Covered in dust most of the time. Uh, I'm enjoying it. It's uh, it's something that I was looking forward to doing this entrance, and we're actually coming to the end of the outside of it, uh, which is what I'm going to be showing over the next week. I didn't want to do more than three parts to the series of putting in the stones because obviously there's going to be repetition and there's no need for us to do that we've got so much that we're going to be filming in the future uh, the stones have gone in fabulous they look fabulous and we're just coming to the end of that so I'm doing some but you filming. Found, you found a fabulous stone that you're going to use as the keystone uh, you've got a lot of work to do on it but it's yeah, a heavy stone. I'll pop in a very small video three or four seconds just showing what we're doing with the stone and then I found a keystone and that's the stone that sits above the entrance right in the centre and sort of denotes the doorway in a kind yeah. of a sense. We've had a few people asking us what we could do with the keystone. Uh, we're not going to intend to do anything clever uh, because the house comes with uh, an it's original, original keystone, keystone hasn't it? when yeah. the house was built. They're very important, they're individual to the house and we should, I personally think, we should respect that one keystone. What the keystones are doing that I'm doing is a purpose, which is locking the blocks together, which I'm showing you step by step. And it also gives the... Um, it gives the doorway just a little bit more presence than... Well, it gives it a character, doesn't a it? A little bit more presence and character than probably just running um, the, 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 the framework stone around. Well, just sort of straight across. Yeah, and it, it, you know, it looks like it's been thunked about, if that's a word, mm. rather than just slapped in. And that keystone is quite difficult to put in, um, but I'm going to show you that next step anyway. Okay. Um, I also want to mention a few things that, that I've actually been given, which I feel very, um, well, I feel very privileged I that somebody get, has actually contacted me. I don't get anything right. given to me. Now, you know, I do try and speak some Italian every so often, and obviously we're using the culture of Italian. So, buonasera, everybody. Buonasera. <laughs> I have good. been sent this book, and it's a fabulous book. It's Speak the Culture of Italy. And it's the first present that we've actually been sent here at Bramble Tie. And it's from one of our subscribers uh, who happens to live in the UK with an Italian name because he's also Italian. So thank you very much, Sergio, for this. I am reading it and I'm thoroughly enjoying it. And I will read it. And you are reading it too. Now that's the first gift I got. Now the other gift I got, we went to visit, if you can remember, some time ago, we went to visit a gentleman called Tam at the... Um, Antico Rigatari. That's very good. Oh, that was another Italian word. That's a oh, English for... Goodness. The English is rubbish dump. <laughs> sort of scrap yard. Yeah. Uh, no, um, what's the programme? The old rag and bone programme? Well, oh, not Step Toe and Son. Step no. Toe and Son. So? That's what it is. Right. But anyway, while we were there, we were looking around, and I actually got some fabulous dishes. You might have seen I used one or two of the dishes when I made the cherry cheesecake. But... 
Um, Tam said, would you like these? Now, I haven't got them in my hands, but I'm going to get down here and show you. I'm going to put that book there. These are very old magazines. They're like a newspaper, but they actually are from 1955. And he has given me, I uh, must be about 20 of these, because I said, oh my goodness, they are absolutely should I, wonderful. As you're holding it up, should I name it? Well, Le, yes, please. What is the name? I think it's La Ropio. La Ropio. Um, those of you who are Italian uh, will probably know this, but I, I've picked out one or two to show you, because I actually think the pictures on the front cover are fabulous. Um, you might recognise the lady on the front of this one. Can you see? They would if you showed it oh, to the sorry. camera. Oh, sorry. Can I get you to hold, Steve? Because the, the, the... Oh, no. I was going to try... If you could hold and then I'll get one at a time. Because I've got quite a few. That's, that's the thing. Right. This picture is Sophia Loren, which we absolutely adore. And, you know, this is 1955, these are. She's coming for tea next week. <laughs> you think so? Oh, and this, this lady can't come for tea, but wonderful Marilyn Monroe. So, you know, these, for me, they're, they're just like treasure. Um, what's, the, what's the history of these magazines? Well, these magazines, they were actually, um, they talked about the sort of of today mm. at the time. Mm. So it was cinema type things. So like... Um, so it's a little bit like the Hello magazine, perhaps, of the day. But these the are day. all in black and white. And obviously we've got wonderful Audrey Hepburn. Um, now... Grace Kelly is the next one. I've picked these ones out especially to show you. I've got some other fabulous ones, but I'm just wanting to show you these ones at the moment. So there's Grace Kelly. Uh, who have we now got? Oh, we've got another one of Sophia Loren. This was obviously Sophia Loren, a little bit younger, but absolutely stunning and beautiful, as always. And obviously, uh, Princess Margaret, um, which would have been at the time when she was going to marry um, Townsend. So, you know... This is just a small selection, but thank you so much to Tam. And he what, just gave it to me. And what would he have done with them? He was going to throw them out. And he said, please take them. And I was like, oh my goodness, I love them. I absolutely love them. And inside is just as interesting. Yes, they're a bit dog-ended. And, and they're, they're all in Italian. But they're all in Italian. So maybe when I learn Italian a little bit more, I'd probably understand these. But 1955, which actually is quite good because um, I wasn't born then. <laughs> I might be old, but I definitely wasn't born in 1955. I think that makes them 77 years old. Yep. That's old. That's old. So, on that note, are we moving on? Is there anything else that we need to talk Oh, the olive trees. Yep, not coming on nicely. Um, but we are a little bit concerned because this we're not is, having much rain. This is the June and July is the time when you can maybe tell where, how the olives are going to go. Although I say every year I don't think it's going to be very good and all of a sudden in, in October uh, the trees are full. But they're not necessarily full of the best olives in the world. Um, we, uh, this is the time to keep an eye on them. Uh, I guess you, you do the next bit. Yeah, well all I can say is at the moment, no there's something else. Although we've talked about Button, she's not here today, but Button has had... Well, she is, but she's over there. Um, she's not up on the scaffolding, which was not what we wanted at all, and there was no way she was going to come up here. But Button has had some fabulous walks uh, with us in the woods on the edge of the Maella, and uh, hmm. I hope Steve's going to maybe include some of that so you will actually see Button amongst sort of yeah, the, buttons, um, the mixture that we put up today. Button's normal daily walks are in the Maya National Park. I think yeah. there's three national parks in Abruzzo, uh, being one of the greenest areas in... Um, Europe. In Europe, believe it or not. It I'm is. always a bit sceptical of that, but apparently it's true. Uh, I think Button has Button got... Button has some... made herself <laughs> known. You can hear Button's, her in the distance. Button's got something she's calling me back, to yes, be fair. Yes. Um, so, so to be honest, um, I would actually say that's the end of uh, what we needed to tell you at the moment, things that have been happening and you know, we are working uh, we are restoring um, I love your comments and oh, one other thing I'm probably going to mention, for those of you that might be interested, I actually started a, a little Facebook uh, group called Bramble Tie and uh, we've got 300 members at the moment and uh, it's really nice because I'm actually showing other little pictures and things that we've do on an everyday basis really yeah and we, as much as we can yeah and we reached uh, a thousand subscribers this week so thank you to everybody that subscribed oh, gosh, it, yeah. it, it, it means a lot to us uh, because we want to grow the channel 
and it means that people are interested in what we're doing, what we're showing. But we're over a thousand. We want to do better, um, so the quality over time will improve, and that's going to take some things to do that. Uh, but now, now we know the direction is pretty solid, uh, then um, no, we're, we're looking forward uh, to the next uh, set of videos, really, for the next yeah. six months. Um, and so, more. So I think. Um, you can hear Button in the distance, so it's important we've got to go and see Button. But um, if you've enjoyed what we've been chatting about, if you enjoy our restoration, the garden, the woods, the lifestyle we have, then please subscribe to our channel. We'd love you to come along on our adventure. Um, please uh, tick the like uh, box because that actually helps the so-called algorithm. I'm still not got my head around it even though I was a maths teacher at one point but you know that's supposed to help and also what's the other thing so we need to subscribe, you need share. to like, share with your friends but the other thing is um, if you do press the sort of bell it gives you a notification when we've got a next video and we are going to now try our best to get a video out every Sunday. Yeah, um, that's what you're doing. That's yeah, what you said. That's yeah, yeah. And we've been doing one a week. Um, what we'd like to do is because it is the summer as well, is just to include some more of the garden because the the veg is growing every day and every week, as all gardeners would probably know. Um, but we don't only want to put garden videos out because obviously people that we we get thousands of questions about the actual building, mm -hmm. and I need to concentrate. We on need the to building. get on with the work. <laughs> And obviously putting the work into filming and doing the work on the building um, is quite something, let alone the other things we've got to do. So I would love now to end the video if Steve could actually stop the camera, restart it and show this fabulous, magnificent view behind us. So it's good night from me. Good night from... I'll see you next time. See you next time. And hopefully you're going to enjoy the sun setting behind us. So, mwah!